Okay. So thank you once again, like I was telling you. Uh, thank you for joining us in this webinar. Um, good morning for all of you if you are in the Asia side and good afternoon or evening according to the time zone that you uh, may be watching us from. My name is uh, Lovery. I am the technical pre-sales manager for Supreme Latin America. So uh, be welcome everyone. We are Supreme, a Supreme leading enterprise, leading company for security and biometrics. Today we are going to have a webinar about the best practices and Supreme, uh, all the integration tools that we have for Biosol Device SDK and also uh, the Biosol 2 API. This is going to be the first uh, session that we're going to have for this webinar, which is in this um, time zone, June the 3rd, 5.40 p.m. Uh, probably in your side, it would be 8.40 a.m., 8.45 at this time probably some other time. So indistinctly of the, of the hour that you can be in your time, thank you for joining us. Uh, tomorrow, we are going to repeat the same session. So if uh, for some reason, you don't have enough time to attend to all the webinar this time, tomorrow uh, you will also have the opportunity for receiving all the, the information that we are going to share today here, okay? We have three different SDKs or three different tools for development. Two types of SDK for device SDK, another SVP SDK and also API. So one of the things that we need to have in mind and it is good to have in mind is this checklist, these requirements that um, these have those um, present in your mind to have enough programming languages, knowing about web languages or uh, other type of languages like C, C++, C Sharp, or the other, like Java, Python, Go, and other languages. And also, please have in mind that Supreme encourages the openness. So uh, if you are working from Windows, uh, please also take in account that you can work from other operative systems as well. And uh, the final note is, uh, though this is not a full training guide for programmers, uh, the things that we are going to talk about here are very technical in the case. Uh, so if at some point, for example, if I say that it is a low level integration, that doesn't mean that it's a bad thing, okay? Actually, low level integration from the programming point of view is a very complete, as more low it can be, as more complete and deep it is, okay? So, um, just to mention something okay uh, about the things that we are going to talk here if at some point you do not feel comfortable with the language the programming uh, the programming or technical um, terms that we are going to be uh, speaking here please let us know and we will do our best to try to translate from a a different um, term that you may be able to understand right so the contents uh, pretty much the things that you see in your screen. Some quick overview and tips, considerations, recommendations, and to finish with some study cases uh, for both API and SDK. And at the end, we're going to have a, a full session of questions and answers. So more than any other thing, please know that even though the questions and answers are at the end of the session, you can interrupt me anytime, okay? Okay, so the integration solutions, these are the set of integration solutions that we can offer uh, for you right away. The device SDK, the Suprema G SDK, also the SVP Android SDK, local API server, and also the new Viostar 2 API. Right, so before starting, one more thing, just in the case that you may uh, still have some confusion between these two terms of what Suprema mean about them. I'm just going to give you a short overview. Uh, what we mean, and I say what we Suprema mean about that is because I have seen that 
from the perspective of other manufacturers. Uh, they handle these terms indistinctly or they give a different meaning for that. For our uh, point of view, the Suprema, what we mean by API is this path to communicate with your app, okay? So we are talking here, a high level integration, okay? So that means that although it's an easy way, uh, easy between columns, uh, it is easy if you know what you're doing, uh, an easy way to, to, to communicate with the Suprema devices and to do integration with third party software and other platforms. Uh, it has some limitations. It is not very deep. So uh, in the case that you may be uh, wanting to develop something more complete, then you'll be able to need or, or you will be uh, needing an SDK instead. And the SDK, it is like a set of APIs together, not only the set of instructions, libraries, and more, but also the sample codes, uh, developer manuals, and some other things that uh, together make the complete pack, okay? So one thing to have in mind, like I'm saying, when you uh, are knowing that Supreme speak about API is something more, um, or may, a better saying, less complex than when we're speaking about SDK. All right, about the compatible hardware, when we are speaking about the device SDK or the Supreme G SDK, all Supreme devices are compatible with that. That means if you have a Supreme device, specifically from the second generation, although we also have um, an SDK for the first generation, but that is already an end of life, it's discontinued. But if you have a second generation device, a device which have been migrated to a second version for Biosar 2, you may be able to use those devices with the SDK or the GSDK. In the case of the API, all the Biosar 2 compatible devices are compatible or supported by the API. And in the case of uh, the SVP Android SDK, these two devices are the ones that you may be looking for. Nobus and Omnis, which from the outside, uh, it is a base station A2 that has been internally converted for being opened uh, for the programming so that you can access to all the hardware available in the device. So that will be the one that we'll be calling Omnis. All right, so uh, when should we use the SDK and the Suprema G SDK? First of all, when you want to build your own server, when you want to build your own system, okay? So in this case, it is supposed that you will not be working with Biostar in parallel. That means that if you are looking for an alternative to access the Suprema devices without the need of using Biostar, uh, because you may be wanting to integrate the Suprema devices with a BMS uh, or a VMS, which is a building management system and a BDO management system. Um, probably the SDK in any of the presentations will be your choice. And why? Because this is a more deep type of integration. So although uh, you would be able to handle more complexity in the, in the instructions for, for the control of devices, you will not be able to be using Biostar 2 at all. Okay. In the other hand, uh, when should we use the API? And I say both types because we have, as you may uh, already know from the previous webinars that we have had, um, we have two different APIs, which is what we call the old API or the previous API that reached onto the version 2.6.3 or the new API that was introduced from Biostar 2.7.10, okay? So uh, either the case, you may be able to use these APIs when you have to build some integration between Biostar 2 and the devices and a third-party uh, software a third party platform and some other uh, custom UI interface that you maybe want to build or even if you want to 
work from your third party software using Steel via SAR2 app to control some aspects of the Supremo devices, you may be able to do that as well. Okay. And when to use the SVP Android SDK. And this I will say when you are interested in building a fully customized system. And this is because you will be working in the firmware of the device directly. That means that if you are working uh, towards a fully customized uh, firmware system that will be able to access directly the sensor, for example, for the fingerprint sensor uh, for the RF river or in the case of the Nobus for uh, communicating remotely to uh, the LTE interface, uh, GPS or other device that may be available in the hardware that you are working with. This uh, will be your choice. Okay. Okay, that's it for that, uh, for, 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 for that part. If you have any question until here, please, uh, we may have the time to do it now. If not, um, let's jump into the next section, which is speaking a little bit more in detail about uh, uh, any of these, all of these um, integration tools of, of them. Uh, okay, so let's keep going. The first of them is the Biostar 2 device as you can. And what we can offer here for the support, it is documentation, manuals, forum, and GitHub. Okay? What you will be finding here is a set of libraries, shared libraries, including the sample code written in C sharp. Okay? And down there, you can see here um, the URL that you can use to access those. What you will be finding if you access the GitHub repository, it is these elements that you can see here. And over here, as we have pointed, the official package. If you click on that official package, you will be displayed this other side. And you will be able to access either by forking uh, the GitHub repository or by downloading uh, the repository in a zip file. If you uh, choose to download it, once you have unpacked it, you will find this here. It will be the package content. So over here, like you see, uh, you will be find the document, examples, and all the libraries like that, okay? That you will be using from your ID to work. Differences, but it is good to notice uh, what are the differences between the better package and the official packages, okay? Pretty much the difference, it is the quality um, control process. So if the package has already passed the quality control process, it is meant to be an official package. If that process is not complete yet, then it will be a better package. Although the better package and the official package has already the latest bug fixes. Just to have that in mind, and over here you can find the uh, GitHub repository address. All right, so the first set of considerations are as follows. The first, of course, if you are working with the device SDK, you have to have enough knowledge about C, C++, or C Sharp. Second to that, the examples are being written in C Sharp. Okay, so if in the case that you may be working or wanting to work with a device SDK and you want to work with another language besides C, C Sharp, or C++, you are free to write your own wrappers for the functions, okay? But in that case, we will not be able to give you support if you are working in a different language than the one that we are um, um, officially supporting, okay? Number three, this is the link. Afterwards, we will be providing you from all this documentation that you can uh, just copy and paste, or uh, just to have a reference, you can Google it as well, and then you will find the full documentation from the SDK. So uh, once uh, this has been said, uh, please have in mind that if you are searching for something specific, 
please uh, just have enough patience. Without any doubt, you will find it there. Okay. Another thing that is worth it to say, it is uh, okay. Thank you, Dante, for for for, for that question. Yes, we have um, now uh, the GSEK and the GSEK. It does have um, support for Java. So uh, I'm just um, going to speak a little bit more about that in the next slides. Okay. So that is. Uh, Good, and thank you for bringing it up, okay? So, um, as for the point four, if you come with this kind of questions to ask, like, for example, how do I uh, read and answer, uh, which is in JSON format, please uh, have that in mind that the support that we are giving for the SDK is not with that kind of issues, okay? The support that we are giving about the SDK is directly with the instructions that you use for interacting with the Suprema devices. Or um, in the other case that I can mention, uh, last time someone came to me and said, hey, lovely, how can I um, read or how can I decode a V64 type? And you know, if you are a programmer like myself, you'll probably be laughing right now because you know that if somebody is working with this kind of data types, they should be knowing what they are doing. If not, uh, just kindly, kindly please uh, register yourself in websites like Stack Overflow, or even just Google searching and you will find some help. But if you are working directly with instructions related with the Suprema devices, with all we will be helping you, okay, to solve any issue that you may be presenting. Next to that, just want to say it once again, when you are working with the SDK, you cannot work with Biostar 2 in parallel. And why? Because the devices can only answer to one server at a time. Not to next one. Working with the SDK means the customer wants to build their own system, sometimes from scratch. That is literal. Or in the case that you want to integrate the Suprema devices with some other platform, like I was saying in previous slides, with some VMS or some VMS. And in either the case, you may be able to use the SDK, but having the consideration that you will be needing to take care of all the constructions for the database, uh, for all the things, connections and other things that will not be expressly the communication between the Suprema and the devices. And that is the point of the seven. The SDK handles all the communication back and forth with the Suprema devices, but not from there to any other element that you may have in the system, okay? If you want to have some other kind of instructions or the type of instructions, you may be needing to take care of those things by yourself. So please have that in mind. The SDK covers all the related instructions regarding to the functions of Suprema devices and the interactions from the back and forth. From there to other point, please, and I say it repeatedly because um, many times we have received questions from the customers about that. If you need to work with the connection of the driver to some SQL uh, database, you have to do it by yourself. Please have that in mind. And also, uh, like I'm saying, the point eight, Although the SDK allows controlling Suprema devices in a very granular way, it is not recommended for initial users, okay? Please have that in mind, okay? And why? Because although the features are fully and, and complete, the preconditions and prerequisites that you need to that can be somehow overwhelming for some experience, for some user that lack experience, okay? so. Please, that have all these considerations in mind. And examples in consideration for the GSK will come soon. 
right? Some example code and some quick start guide you can find in these links that we are giving you here. Okay. If you have some question until this point, please uh, do it now. If not, we're going to jump onto the next element, which is the Supreme IG SDK. And uh, as Dante was asking me uh, before, uh, with this new SDK that we have introduced just a short time ago, uh, we have the chance to cover all the other languages that before we will not. Uh, and this would be for Java, Python, and some other uh, languages that are going to be covered. And if they are not covered already, they will be in the near future. Okay. So this is based on the gRPC, gRPC framework or gRPC infrastructure. And as if you know already about the gRPC, you know. Uh, this uh, infrastructure, infrastructure is cloud-based. It was born with that in mind, so it is being optimized to work in such a way that it is language independent. The means of that is that you can be working with pretty much all type of languages like you see in the gRPC client, like Go language, uh, C Sharp, Java, Python, Ruby, and other languages as well. And we are Suprema right now, we have the support for these and we are going to bring up uh, the support from another languages in the coming future, in the near future, like I was saying before. So now with this, you are able to work with other languages that previously probably uh, we uh, were not. To make it still some comparison between uh, the device SDK and the Suprema G SDK, it is this that you can see in your screen right now. The implementation for the device SDK is shared libraries. You know, this is not a new paradigm. It's been in the programming world for quite some time until now, but the G SDK paradigm is quite new. Okay, uh, here you will be handling client libraries and also uh, all the concepts with device gateway, uh, master gateway, and some other. That if the case that you do not know about what is a gRPC, please give a search about that and you will understand all the things that we want to know. Uh, as for the operative system support, before we had support for Windows and Linux only, but now with the GESDK, we have support for pretty much all the languages, all the operative systems, sorry. Windows in both uh, x86, that means 32-bit or 64-bit, and also from, uh, for another architectures like ARM architecture and also for Mac OS X. And the support of languages have also increased in the GSDK, C++, Java, Python, Go, uh, Ruby, C Sharp, Node.js, and others as well. So um, you may be finding yourself more comfortable probably working with the GSDK. But uh, the thing, uh, the current situation of the GSDK is that we have implemented, better saying, R&D have implemented uh, some simple features until now. Um, the kind of features that we will be implementing as Supremo uh, for the GSDK will be expanding in the time. Okay, So please uh, keep tuned all the announcements that you, we are going to release about this. Okay? More uh, to the Firestar 2 API. Some advantages of using the API over the SDK. Okay, here we are jumping into another tool of uh, integration. Just please have that in mind that the previous two were SDKs, as we said before, is the software development kit. But from this point on, we are talking about API like this, which is sets of instructions, uh, which are more flexible or in the in the sense of less complex. The DSDK and what are the advantages of using the API over the DSDK? And these are one of them, a couple of them. The API allows you 
uh, to keep working with the Biosat 2, uh, Biosat 2 7. Okay, so that is pretty much one of the biggest advantages that in the case that you may be wanting uh, to still use all the good things about um, Biosat 2, you will be able to do it using the SDK, the, the API. Okay. All right, so uh, also when you are working with the API, you can still make all the interactions with the third party software and also making direct communication with the Viasar 2 server. Like I was saying, because you are using the Viasar 2 server service, you will not be needing to build your own database because you will be uh, working with all the database schemas that are already configured in the WSR2 server. And also be able to be working with the Suprema app that it is either in the Play Store or in the other architecture, okay? So probably those are one of the most uh, prominent advantages. And once again, what is the API? It is the way to integrate with third party software. And still, like I was saying, using the back end service of the Viastar 2 server through the API engine communicating with the third party software. Okay, so this is one of the most uh, good things about that, which allows you to have integrations developed in less time to be less complex as well. Okay, so when to use the API, for example, let's say that we want to extract um, the logs, the user logs from some the third party software, we can be making the call, uh, our development or your application will be the bridge between the third party software and the Wasr2 server. And once we receive these, we can be sending here with the proper calls that we'll be needing. And once we make the requirement, the even logs information will be um, answered back, will be replied back to the place, okay? Which in this case is the device. And in the way, or in the um, time that you may be wanting to retrieve the even logs in real time, that will be using the website interfaces, okay? And why? Because when you use the search, condition from the API uh, as a restful API, it takes some time to register first the uh, events through the server and then to store those events into the database and then the API retrieves the data from the database. So in all that procedure and all that time consumes a couple of seconds. So it's not completely in real time, but when you are working through the web socket, the communication is pretty much in real time. So in the case that your application may be needing to work in real time, this will be a choice that you will be having. Okay? So uh, as for mentioning some advices, uh, which kind of tools to use for your development when you are using the API, uh, probably the first one will be Postman, which is this one, in case you do not know it yet, is this uh, being developed by Google, and it is a way to try the API calls directly from the program without the need to write all the code. But if you are working uh, right away with some uh, Angular JS, for example, you uh, may be working with the Angular ID, which is this one, or probably Atom, which is this other one. And uh, in my experience, Apache Cordova is a very good one. It has a lot of uh, good tools that you can be using, or probably IntelliJ IDEA, which is this one of uh, WebStorm as well, which are products from uh, JetBrains, uh, the same developers from the Android Studio, and from my point of view, very good ones. And also, if you are very faithful to Microsoft products, then you will be working with Visual Studio or with Xcode, which is a free version from the ID. Okay. These are just recommendations in case uh, you may be wanting to know which alternatives you uh, have to work with the API. Right. Uh, just a brief introduction. Um, 
not very extensive about the Android SBP or the SBP Android SDK. Some comparisons between uh, the SDKs when you are working with the device SDK, what you are working with or through it is the server and all the instructions uh, from here to the device are already written. Yeah, you are only using it to customize your server and you will be uh, still working with uh, the stock firmware for, for the device. But in the case of the SVP Android SDK, everything will be customized. And why? Because the SVP Android SDK allows you to unlock everything in the device, okay? In this case, the by station A2, which we call Omnis, or in the case of Novo's device as well, you will be able to be working directly in the device in the same way that you will be doing if you will be working or developing an application for an Android phone in this case. So uh, all the things that you are um, able to do uh, through the Android, uh, a studio you will be also able to be working with uh, and working with the SVP Android SDK. In this case, like uh, I was saying previously, you have complete freedom and you can create your own firmware. Okay? So just to make a comparison on how the SDK uh, handles the, the interchange or the exchange of the data uh, through the instruction, which we call B as to a scan fingerprint, that server or the SDK retrieves the firmware from the device and then what it is uh, returned to the server, it is not the full raw image from the uh, fingerprint, but the template. So the stock framework already makes the work to convert the raw fingerprint image to the template and then the template is returned. But in the case of the SVP under the SDK, what you are doing is that you are handling the fingerprint scanning through a device listening. And then all the data in row will be transferred from the device SDK through the server. Here you have to write in your own through the Android SDK all the things that you will be needing to convert the raw data into a template and from there to do whatever you want in the system. Okay. So how to get started here? You have the SVP Android SDK uh, site in our Suprema uh, base knowledge. Over here you file, you find the manual online. And you, get, and you can get started and uh, how to do it. You can download the Android Studio and then import the library as if you will be working with a top party library from Android Studio and then to deploy your code into the uh, device that it will be connected through USB through your computer. Okay? And some small video uh, demonstrations that you have here uh, to install, you see that the device has become just like a phone, an Android phone. Here you can, um, I don't know, just enroll a new user and then um, scan the fingerprint, put your finger in the, in the sensor, um, make the verification from the fingerprint and then show the enroll success. And after that, you can also verify, which will be the same as the authentication. As you see, this um, graphical interface that is in the demo video is very simple. It's not for a production, of course. It is just to show the functionalities. Or in the case of the monitoring, for example, you can find all the things that are uh, happening right away when you scan a fingerprint, everything that it will be happening at the time. Uh, the device here. What you can do through the demo uh, app that we can provide you if you are working with the uh, Omnis is to turn the device on, to open the app, test the fingerprint authentication, roll the fingerprint, verificate, update the fingerprint, or also delete the data. Okay? From there, if you need to work with something else, then that will be your call. Okay? So that is it for all the, um, how can I say, recommendations or things. We are going to jump onto the practical cases. 
which is uh, based on the experience of the partners in our region that we can mention some of the study cases that have applied either the SDK or either the API. Okay, if you have some question until here, please uh, you may do it now. Okay, so all the questions that have been uh, done, all my co-workers and the agents are being taken care of them right now. So after the time, we'll be having another time with questions and answers. Let's get to this. API integration cases. Probably one of the most known in, in Latin America will be the, this visitor suffer, which name is Welcome, developed by the name, by the company, which name is Welcome Technologies. And um, as you can see the description in the, in the slide, uh, the process of, uh, of the software when a person arrives is first he can uh, schedule the uh, the visit that he is going to have uh, through an online website. When he gets to the uh, physical place, he presents his ID. The program has this um, online recognition tool for extract all the data from the document to the capture of the fingerprints and that also that is in upcoming, that is in uh, process that's right now the, the integration with face station 2 and face light until this time it is taking the picture and retrieving and rolling the the, 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 the fingerprint from the person after that the software take takes care of all the um, access control rules for the for the software and the integration of that with bar 2 uh, access rules as well uh, the access groups as well and the visitor has a chance to enter the building with his fingerprint, also making a real-time monitoring on him. And after finishing, it is a automatic um, checkout. Okay, so uh, these are one of the uh, best uh, features that we can mention about this software. And this was developed using the API. Okay. This is another uh, project that was worked using the API, and this was for the Israeli Sports Center using BioStation L2 as a managing device for the turnstile system. And the web socket that I was speaking about, which is uh, some slides previously, to retrieve the logs in real time and then to extract the information from the partner, from the, uh, from the person that is. Uh, in the in the system already, and then showing that information in a screen that is visible to the security personnel. That is in 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 the opening side or in the entry side of the building. With this, of course, the the system between the becomes more intuitive and more secure as well, as for the partner cannot enter uh, if the picture it is different from. From the person that is actually entering the, the building and some other security concerns that they have in the place. Another uh, case that we can mention here it is this uh, case where the integration was made with Easy Lobby uh, from HID and also uh, to another uh, ACU brand that they used uh, Face Station 2 and also the replication to these data center with TIR3 and the replication, the user's replications okay, for the visitors. Another case that we can mention here, it is the integration through the API uh, with Tyco. In, in, in this case, the user's creation are being handled by Software House. This is specific and the replication by the API and also uh, database integration. Right? So uh, the Suprema devices are being connected through Wigan to the 12 party ACU and through the API, the user's replication to have in both um, platforms at the same time and then to have a more transparent integration. 
Okay. And this is another visitor, Safa. Uh, this was developed by Drums, which is one of the partners that we have in the in the region. And the name of the the, the, the software is in access. And if you can be noticing, uh, the software has the, the look and feel the same as Biosar 2. It looks pretty much like Biosar 2. So that is one of the things that uh, customers has been like liking so far. And here, the same, as you can read in the description of the key features, you are able to um, establish different types of visitors. You are able to enroll using either face station 2, or either face light, not only uh, the Biomini plus 2, or taking pictures only through the webcam. Um, that means that in this case of the pandemic COVID-19, you can be registering the users uh, for visiting your place using face station 2 and face light, not only fingerprint. Okay? You can assign different kinds of cards using the same system, and everything is embedded and completely integrated with Biostar 2. So that is one of the uh, best features that we can mention in this software that was built using the main way. Another software, uh, pretty much similar, it is this food court management system where the, the, the personnel is managing the fingerprints or the printing of tickets using the API and the integration with Biosar, of course, for a third-party software, which is a food core management platform software. Okay? The difference here, because we have also some integration with uh, printers uh, for uh, the fingerprint devices, but are zero printers. In this case, this customer, this uh, partner in the region have developed through the API, the integration for TCP and USB printers. Okay? Besides integration, like I said previously, with the food court system. Another type, time and attendance system. In this uh, specific case, um, the integration goes for the way to integrate a web request for leaves. Okay, so uh, the workers, the employees, they can access through the system for a website which was developed by the, by the partner. And this website, it is uh, integrated via uh, API to a star to TNA service, TNA module. And uh, it can schedule the, 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 the lead request from them. And once the person from the HR, they, they um, they allow the, the, the leave request, then the leave request enters to, to, to the module of uh, Biostar 2, and also the deductions, the proper deductions of salary from the payroll software. Okay? So this is a very good system that was developed as well using the API. And another um, integration, in this case, the, the customer is IKEA, you may be knowing this. This company is a worldwide uh, company. And in this case, they use as well the WebSocket to retrieve uh, the live information from Biostar and from the devices. And using this information for consolidation, remote authentication, and staff control as well. Okay. This is another. And also in the parking system, the, this parking system was built also using the API. And one of the good things about this is it is integrated with the time and attendance module from uh, this company in, in, in Guatemala, which is one of the biggest companies of the most prominent enterprise business towers in, in Guatemala. And this is also handling through uh, the turnstile or the, the system for the access control for all the employees, okay? And it is also uh, integrated with the CCTV. So that is one of the uh, best uh, key features that we can mention about this system. And another core integration uh, with Core Station. In this case, the country was Peru and the end customer was Biru. Um, all this case was also shared in the uh, study cases for the core station that are already in our social media and then you can uh, retrieve more specific information about what this uh, customer or what this product was about if you search in our website as we mentioned before. 
the integration between SAP Biostar 2 through the API and also managing some third party readers for some um, control system, systems and control uh, specifics using the DM20 to activate the relays. Okay? Like I was saying, using a third party readers, not uh, Supreme readers in this case. So, uh, this shows the flexibility that we have with our devices and the integration with third party uh, platforms as well. So that was for the API uh, integrations. Uh, to jump onto the device SDK uh, integrations, this is what we have. Uh, an time and attendance customer, custom platform that was developed specific using our um, devices to apply or to integrate with these other platform. Okay? In some cases, uh, we are not allowed to disclose more information, but this is useful to tell you that you can use our device SDK to do pretty much what you want to do. This is a help for personal management. And from my point of view, this is very clever and this is really good really good to handle all the uh, needing functions for the personal. As you can see, the programming diagram, or the procedure diagram it is, you have the paramedic personal, and the first question that the system does, it is, where are they? Do you know where are they based on the punchings, the given punching out to punching in that they have done through our devices, retrieves, through the device SDK. In this way, they can know where the personal is. Once they know where the personal is, the first thing that they ask it is, are they in an allowed break time? Yes or not? If they are, then they go for those that are available. And when it finds the first personal that is available, they send that personal to attend the emergency. Okay. So that is very good thing that uh, they've been having applied in quite some um, companies around um, in the region. And if you may be interested in knowing more about any of these things, you can write us and we'll be glad to help. Okay. Another system, this was uh, developed in Colombia. This is TNA on the way. Okay. Uh, this was developed before. Uh, we were releasing Nobus device. Uh, so this system is taking BioEntry W2. They connect the BioEntry W2 inside the bus. Uh, this system connects remotely also um, through the SDK to another uh, system through the internet, arrives to a custom server, to a custom database. And in this way, they do the time and attendance controls okay, using our Suprema devices. And also to mention some other that is uh, quite interesting. It is a Bolt, a Bolt uh, control system that was uh, a project some time ago uh, developed from this uh, BMS, which name is Akero, using a custom interface for the device SDK and the face station to and the BioEntry W2 to make a stronger dual and simultaneous user parallel authentication. The way they developed this was two persons were um, initiating the authentication at the same time, one with the face and one with the fingers. And once one is done with the face, then he goes to the finger and the one that started to the finger then it goes to the face so it is performing both authentications at the same time and of course is if one of these persons that they are meant to start the procedure in one way and they start in the opposite way then they are using this order as a duress type of authentication so the bolt will not open even if the authentication is successful so this all conditions are being handled through the custom interface and through the device as you can. Okay, so uh, this system is, is, is really interesting. And actually, like I'm saying, if you are uh, interested in making some other type of integration and you may be wanting some assessment from us about where or how to do it, 
then you can you can contact us and we'll be glad you uh, of help you okay? and some other cases that i can mention some integrations that are on the way it with averix averix unity software this has been developed specifically for some um country uh, right now, and we are waiting that some after this will be ready. It will be also uh, ready for many other places. Okay, Averis have been working through the integration of Core Station along with another unit from from us to have the integration between their platform and our devices, and some other integrations that are coming in the way that we are still. Um, in negotiations on how to handle them. It is with Arteco. Okay, Arteco is very respectable EVMS software uh, that is events video driven management system. Okay, so uh, this is very good. You can check that uh, software in, in in Google if you want to know more about that. In the integration, like we are saying, uh, using Suprema uh, devices. Just arriving to the uh, finish of our of our presentation of our uh, webinar today, the conclusions that we can mention about those are through the devices in case it is possible to access the Suprema devices directly. Okay? Although it allows us to have much more granular control of the functions of our devices, this is uh, at the same time one of the most complex. Okay. So uh, if you are intending to do a quick integration, please think about the API instead of the SDK. But if you want to jump deeper, then probably the SDK will be the, the, the choice. Perhaps, like I'm saying in the, in the second point, you may be interested in wanting uh, to work with the API instead, then you can be doing it, taking in account uh, these considerations that I'm writing you here. And uh, the three, the third one, if you are a bit bolder and you want to go and build your own software, your own platform, all from scratch and all from the device, uh, thing, you can go for the SVP under this, okay? And you will be able to handle everything you want using the Omnis uh, uh, hardware or, or, or also the, the Nobles device, okay? And just to finish, um, going towards the future, we, Suprema, um, want to take you to that point. So just imagine the opportunities that unfold when all the integration power between the platform is in your hands, okay? So like I was saying, we, Suprema, want to take you there, okay? So in the case that you are not still working with us in these kind of projects, Please uh, think it, think about it, and take it uh, as one of the advices that you can take to your heart. You can rely on us, and we'll do our best to support you and to provide you with all the things that you need so that you will be able to accomplish everything you want. Okay, so that is it for my side. If you have some questions, uh, you may do it now. And if you may be grinding or wanting to grind us, um, you can do it through the email that you see in your screen. And if you are contacting us from another place that is not Latin America, uh, also we can direct you through to the proper channel that will be able to handle your request in your own region. And if you are listening to us from Latin America, then you can write directly to us and we'll be gladly We'll be gladly helping you. Okay? So we open the, the questions and answers times. Be uh, comfortable in doing it. Okay, we are getting ready for wrapping up the, the, the webinar. And before uh, we end up and we end the polling, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I am deeply grateful for the time that uh, you uh, reserved for us in this time. Thank you so much. Please be tuned for all the webinars that are upcoming as well. And if at some point you um, did not have enough time to join us for this uh, session, 
for the full session. Tomorrow we are to be covering again the, the same material. So if you want to invite some other person to assist and, and get this this information, please, uh, you may be able to do it um, as well. Like I'm saying once again, thank you so much for, for your attendance. It was a pleasure for us to have you in this opportunity. So once again, muchas gracias a todos los que eh, nos acompañaron desde, desde cualquier lugar en Latinoamérica. Muchas gracias por su tiempo. Thanks a lot. Gracias mille. And Thomas and Sandra. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day if you are starting your day in your time zone. And if you are in an evening time like myself or some other in between, the same way, have a wonderful day. I have blessings from above. And thank you uh, so much for everything. Bye-bye.